By the way, when I mention praise, you know, I always, always mention, you know, you know, I get to work next week. Miss Brenda, you know how it is. You were married to a bricklayer. Last day I worked was the uh, January, December 30th. Seriously. Okay. That was, that was the last day I worked. So, 45 cents a brick times zero, you do that for five days a week. Because that's, that's what I love. Everybody will say, well, you own your own company. So, you, so you know, you, you're always going to no. know. Some days your paycheck can be in the negatives. Some days you have no paycheck. It's just what it is. I'm convinced that's why you'll never see a bricklayer. I've yet to meet a bricklayer that is an atheist. I'm being serious. Every bricklayer I know, they go to church somewhere. Or they're a preacher. And, and honestly, I think a lot of it's to do with the fact that this is the time of year where we may not work all month. One year I worked two days in January. And this is before uh, I found out about Dave Ramsey. This was uh, back whenever it took $800 a week just to pay the bills. Now, I assure you all, in two days, I did not make $3,200. I didn't. If I could make that in two days, then, oh, man, it would be on. I didn't. I have to trust God. Today's message is, once again, I mean, I'm up here, so y'all know it's going to be a simple message. But this, this is something that, this time of year, I read a lot, and I dwell on a lot. Now, most of y'all know me, now we've got James and Miguel, and, you know, there, there's, there's a few people that haven't been here as long as me, so they haven't, they haven't seen what all I've been through. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of a testimony. I'm not bragging on myself. I'm bragging on what God's done for me. When we first started coming to this church, I had just quit drinking. Okay? When we first started coming to this church, I was having to take medicine for anxiety and stress. I was so stressed out from my day-to-day and everything that in my early 30s, I had shingles. As a matter of fact, that's why the doctor put me on medicine for stress. Because he asked me, he said, Joey, how's it been? Oh, it's, it's fine. It's everything. Joey, you got shingles. Shingles are caused by stress. When I first come to this church, that's what I had to do. I had to take medication for my heart. I had to take medication for stress. I had to take medication for anxiety. I refused to be on antidepressants because they changed my personality. My whole life I've battled with depression. I want want you all to understand where when I came here, where I started at. I've learned through the years that everything that we do is, it's a lifestyle change if you want results. If you want control over your finances, it's a lifestyle change. If you want control over your diet, your weight, it is a lifestyle change. It takes 21 days to form a habit. It takes 90 days to change your lifestyle. It's something you have to get up every morning and you have to work on. You have to struggle with it. Every morning I wake up and I I still to this day suffer from depression. I don't know why. I guess it's a chemical imbalance in my head. Okay. I have days that are really, really low and really, really dark. Every day I wake up and it is a struggle. 
I cannot do this on my own. I'm just being honest with y'all, and I'm just, I'm just telling y'all what, what I've been thinking about and what I've been reading about. I cannot make it through this life on my own. Now I was reading in Matthew uh, 6, 25. And as soon as I said that, I know 90% of y'all instantly know this, this scripture. I'll let y'all get there. Therefore, I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on it. Is life more than meat and the body more than raiment? Most of my life, this is what I did, is I ran around and I worried about these things. This is a common thing for people to worry about. How are we going to pay the bills? This is a common reason why people get divorced. Is stress. How are we going to make it? What are we going to do? It's tough. I started telling you all that I have not worked all year. And and I'm not telling you all this for sympathy. I'm telling you all this. I want you all to see where I started. I want you all to see where I'm at. And it's nothing that I've really done. It's everything that God's done. I made nothing this week. I had bills this week. How stressed have I been about it, Noel? Not. Okay? I'm not going to sit around. I'm not going to worry about what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, what I'm going to wear. The Bible says, Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more than they? See, when I talk about waking up every morning with depression, and my wife knows when something's wrong with me. She can tell I have my weird tics. It's hard for me sometimes to get around groups of people. Some days it's really hard. You know, I love this church. Y'all are my family. Y'all think I just say that. I'm being serious. Y'all are my family. But there are days where it is so hard to get up and it is so hard to come to church. It is. I have to think about this. I have to sit here and think. Don't worry. The birds are taken care of. I love the next verse. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubic to his statue. If sitting around, who, who can sit and worry about something so, so much that you actually improve yourself? It deteriorates your health. It does. If worrying about something could make you great, then we have the world's best basketball coach ever sitting in a sound booth. Razorbacks calling. Six million dollar contract. A year. I want to be. I want to be like a cowboy or something. I, I want to get paid for it. You know, if worrying could do something, every one of us would be great at something, because every one of us worry about stuff. But it doesn't do anything. It puts us in a bad mood. If you already have some problems, it, it makes them problems worse. Worrying when you have a heart problem, it makes your heart mess up more. It does. And it's for nothing. Why take, th- take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye? I'm going to stop right there. 
This is a beautiful state. I love hiking. I love fishing. Part of the reason why I love fishing is just looking at the water and looking at the fish. This world is beautiful when you get out in nature. Aaron shows some pictures of the state parks they go to. This world is beautiful. God takes good care of this world and the, the beauty of it. The grass, the, the ground doesn't worry. Am I going to have beautiful flowers in this field? God takes care of that. All the worrying that we do is the product of one thing, and it's the last part of verse 30. O ye of little faith. When we sit and we worry, we forget. We forget who we are. We forget who our Heavenly Father is. Our faith is weak. And I don't, I don't want you to sit there because you, you're reading this and you're hearing about the birds. They're, they're not doing anything. A lot of people will read this and they'll take it. Well, oh, well, this means sit back and don't, don't worry about nothing. God will take care of you. It doesn't. No, there's, there's actually stuff I have to do. I mean, if I, I was talking to Pastor once and we were talking about everything, you know, the building. He said, what are you going to do if you have to get another job? I've had the same job for 20 years, people. I've owned the same company for 20 years. He said, what are you going to do? I ain't going to worry about it. That's God's problem. It's took six years to get to this point, people. A lot of times when people are worried and they're stressed, and if you've got something you're worried about in your life, you know, you try this, and it's like, well, I, you know, I try not to worry. Here, I'll just, we'll read on down to the solution. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need for all these things. Now here's the solution. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. There's a lot of times where people, they'll, they'll sit there and they'll worry and they'll stress and they'll say, well, you know what? I tried that. I, I, I woke up in the morning and I prayed. I read my Bible. I, I done this. I done that. And it, it, it didn't work. One day. One week. One month. This is not something that's going to happen Instantly. Building your faith is not something that's going to happen instantly. It takes time. You have to seek ye first the kingdom of God. Wake up with depression. If anybody here suffers with it, one of the best things to do to hit the ground running is for you roll over, crawl out of bed, and put on the little happy smile, the fake smile. is be praying to God. I'm not even talking about asking Him, you know, just to give you strength for the day to make it. That will come later. Start praising God for everything that you've got. I'm in a warm bed right now, God. Thank you. There's people out there that's not in a warm bed. There's people out there that's homeless. I've got, I've got a friend who's homeless by choice. I've yet to figure that one out. <laughs> But he is. I mean, he's happy that way. Thank God for my family. I've got a wife. I've got kids. They're all healthy. I'm healthy. You start thinking of all the little things that you're praying God for. I woke up today. End of the year, we gave testimonies. You know, I I made it. That's an accomplishment. And my friends that know me well know that's a really big accomplishment. We made it another year. But getting up and thanking God for all the blessings that He's given us. If we stop looking at the problems and all the negative and just start thinking of all the things that's great in our lives, everybody here is blessed beyond means. I mean, seriously, we're all blessed. 
telling y'all, y'all are really blessed. Y'all's daughter, she's okay. That's a blessing. You know, it talks about the Gentiles. For after these things do the Gentiles seek. The world's walking around. The world's stressed out. The world's scared. They don't know what they're going to do because they don't have a heavenly father. They don't have a father that loves them. We do. We have to realize we have a heavenly father. He loves us. You skip over one chapter. Matthew 7, 7, verse 7. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be open. Or what man is there of you, whom if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Now, Jameson, you ever do that to Jeremiah? You ever ask for food and you give him a stone or a stick or a car tire? Well, I get that. I, I get that with teenage daughters, okay? Uh, okay, I get that with daughters, period. Let me just put it that way. Or if he asks of a fish, will he give him a serpent? I mean, seriously, we love our children. I mean, we do. I mean, somebody tried to mess with anybody's child in here, that's when you're going to see some people turn them pretty mean pretty quick. If then, being evil, because we know our heart is wicked, we know we are more prone to evil than we are anything. We know that the Bible says that no man seeketh after righteousness. So if the way we are and the way our heart is, we being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask? See, instead of sitting around and worrying, if we look at everything like we're supposed to, the money that I have is not mine. The house that I have, it's not mine. Everything I have is God's. If we get to the point in our life where we give everything that we got to God, We wake up and we die daily. We give our lives to God. We seek after God. Everything that we have is God's. There's no point worrying about losing it. I'll probably get to work this week. How many brick am I going to get to like? I don't know. (coughs) Are my bills going to get paid? Yeah. God has a really good sense of humor. There's been several times where me and my wife not said nothing to no one and then, you know, all of a sudden we ever get a check in the mail or somebody calls and say, hey, I got some food. And so we're thinking we're picking up something like bread and sandwich and instead somebody's got like 15 bags from Walmart. We went grocery shopping for you. See, people think this talks about sitting back and doing nothing. But if you're seeking God, you're reading your Bible. You're talking to God. You want a chance to, to learn more about the Bible? I'll, I'll, give a, I'll give a sales pitch for Faith Bible. It starts on the 17th. Starting at semester one, you'll go through the whole Bible, verse by verse. I don't care who you are, you'll learn something. You'll learn something interesting. But you study the Bible, you... You're learning about God. You're learning about your Heavenly Father. You're learning about His nature. And you're learning about how you should be. Study your Bible. You Somebody will stumble across Proverbs and 6 and verse 6. Go to the ant, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise. Which has no God, overseer, or ruler provided her meat in the summer, and gather her food in the harvest. The ant works. It gets up, it works. 
It stores food. This passage of Scripture is not talking about it's, it's bad to invest or it's bad to plan for the future. Because we should do that, but we should work. One of the best things to do to get your mind off of your problems is to worry about other people's problems. If we all sit around and we worry about everybody else's problems, guess what? Your problem's going to get taken care of. Everything in our life should be God-centered. Everything. And I, I know y'all have heard that, and I've said it many a times. But if you get where you're doing this every day, one thing I love about Brother Jameson there is he sends a devotion to me every day. I mean, that's a really good ministry. Because, I mean, let's, let's be honest, there's, there's days we don't feel like getting up and reading, right? There's days we feel we're too busy. Jameson sends that message early in the morning. I'll get around to it sometimes at lunch, and I'll read it, depending on how my morning goes. But you know what? I read it. I spend time in the Bible. I'm, I'm reading what he's writing. I'm reading the passage. We, we all sit around and say we don't have time. We don't have time to read the Bible. What if, what if we cut back one show on Netflix? Make sure nobody throws something at me. I just knew that was going to happen. What if we did that? You know? One show, 30 minutes. What if 30 minutes, instead of the family sitting around watching a show that's going to pass by really fast, and then you're going to watch another show, and the next thing you know, you're binge watching for 10 hours. What if we sit around? Yeah, I'm guilty of that. That's why my wife's laughing. What if we sit and we made time to read the Bible? What if we sit and made time to pray? I know a lot of people, it's hard to pray for an extended time. I know a lot of people have problems with that. I mean, this should be time spent. It should be like talking to our best friend. I'm guilty about telling God about how my day's going. I mean, he knows how it went, but I guess I'm trying to tell him my side of the story. I mean, but spending time in prayer... That sounds like a gunshot. We all have time for it. We have to make the time. But the Bible tells us if if we seek God, if we seek Him first, it says all these things will be added unto us. One reason why I joined this church and I, I tried to get active and I tried to get busy It's because I realized that the years I've been out of church, my life was falling apart. And it was falling apart rapidly. I was miserable. So we start doing this. We start working. There's always something to do. There's always something to do. Always something to do for the Lord. You got friends? You can tell them about the Lord. Because see, the Gentiles, they're running around, they're lost. The lost people, they're running around, they're lost. They have no clue. And this, you know, this talks about us being different. My neighbors should, my neighbors seen my truck home all week. But when I'm out there, whenever I did venture out into the cold, I don't like cold weather, where I talked to somebody, I wasn't stressed, I wasn't worried, I wasn't grumpy. I just, yeah. Went to my father-in-law's and moved the a cabinet for him. He says, so what are you doing to cold weather? I haven't done nothing. Oh, it's nice. They see a difference. You know, you jump back a few pages to Matthew uh, 5. Let me get there. Thirteen and fourteen, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt has lost its flavor, 
where within shall it be salted? It is good, thence for um, it is thence for good for nothing, but it's cast out and trotted upon under the foot of man. Sorry, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. We're supposed to be different. We're supposed to be a light. We're supposed to be reflecting the light of our Lord. They're supposed to see us and see something different. When most people hate, when most people are angry, we're to be nice. We're to be meek. We're to be humble. I'm not saying get ran over. Y'all know I don't like getting ran over. But you know what? If Derek does something that makes me mad, okay, I'll tell y'all one thing. I was really good, okay? I'm going to let y'all know. I had a guy call me, and I feel that this man gave me a piece of his mind that he really couldn't afford to give. Okay? Okay? And all I was thinking is, I don't know this guy. He knows people that knows me. And he knows that I I do preach, so I need to be a Christian. He is yelling at me on the phone, and I'm, yes, sir. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry we have this misunderstanding, sir. That's okay. I stay amazingly calm. Like the whole time, though, I'm praying to the Lord, Lord, help me. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I am. His Lord help me. Help me be like you. And it didn't make the guy more angry that I was just so calm and was like, well, I'm sorry, sir. And when we got it, well, right before he hung up on me, I told him, I said, well, there's, there's no way we can solve this. I, I do apologize. I've gave you everything you need to do this. Here's another bricklayer's name and number. I do apologize and, uh, you know, God bless you and I hope you have a better day. And all I hear is click. And then an hour later he starts texting me and I block his number so that I don't lose my patience. But (laughs) we we have to be different. I mean, was that hard to do, bite my tongue? Yes. Did I have to rely on God the whole time? Yes. Was I angry at that guy just as angry as he was at me? Yes. But I didn't want to ruin my testimony or I didn't want to ruin a chance to later on lead this guy to the Lord. So many times we get angry at people and we can can just say it, spout out something hateful and it ruins our testimony. The Bible says we're alive. We don't need to do that. Now, I know I'm talking about testimonies, having that stuff like that and worrying. And From where I was six years ago, got busy in this church. I enrolled in Faith Bible. I'd been in there for six years, every semester, every summer elective. I've got godly friends. Because of this church, I actually got godly friends. Because I'm, I'm just going to tell y'all, my friends, whenever I drank, and then I, I, I stopped drinking and I started going to church. And I'm going to tell y'all, it's on heart medicine, and um, drinking without heart medicine could lead to um, death. Seriously, death, little skull, crossbone. Okay? I tell my friends that I can't drink with you because I, you know, I could die. Oh, you're not going to die. My friends didn't care about me. They liked the guy that helped buy the alcohol. I realized I had a lot of bad friends. I came here, I got good, godly friends. They seen I had a problem and they gave me good, godly counseling. See, when picking out my friends, God was the sinner. Now am I saying, oh, you can't, you can't have any friends that are lost? You have friends that are lost. But if they're influencing you, more than you're influencing them, you might need to cut ties. You may stumble. I had to cut ties with friends. Was it hard? Yes. I still talk to them. I'm still polite. 
matter of fact, one of them, he, he, he became Catholic and told me if I just switched over to Catholicism, I could drink again. He switched, his, he switched to religion for alcohol. But learning and seeking God, everything that we do, our friends, our music. Ask Aaron. He can, he can tell you all sorts of good music to listen to. He can, he can give you a playlist. He does that. We, we have a little group message with other friends. And, and a new album comes out. I wanted to say CD, but they're not CDs no more. new album on Apple Play comes out. Aaron sends it. Listen to this. Nine chances out of ten, I listen to it. If I like it, which most of the time I do, I download it. Got a whole playlist called um, Johnny Chimpo and the Shrimp Shack Shooters. That's what my playlist is for my music. A long story behind that. My point in everything that I'm rambling on about here. is I understand worrying and I understand why people worry. And if you have issues worrying, you're to seek God. Come to church. Get involved in church. Doesn't mean you got to sing or, or preach or do a Sunday school. Praise God for the people who get here early and they'll find little pieces of trash on the floor and they pick it up. Nobody knows who does that. But praise God for them people. The people who see the leaves blown up on the sidewalk and they get a broom and they brush it away. Somebody that kills the spiders. The crazy people who get rid of the wasps when it's summertime. There's all different jobs. Mowing. I'm a firm believer if, if you get involved in the church and you're doing some form of serving somewhere, the church is no longer impersonal. It's a personal thing. You've got to tie to it. This is my church. I've got a job i got to do. It took six years to get to the point where I'm not worrying about things. It took six years of growing and maturing. Some people can do it in less time. I'm stubborn. Ask my wife. Six years. But the thing is, is I've had neighbors before call me and ask if I was sick or what was wrong with me because one Sunday I drove my work truck to church. And my neighbor seen my truck gone on a Sunday. And so they were wondering if I was working, what had happened, why wasn't I in church. These are lost neighbors, by the way. And I have to call them back after church service because my phone's sitting up there and be like, they, you know, they'll be texting. I'm like, I just drove my church, my truck to church. It's okay. We're to be different. Don't run around stressing. God take care of you. That's one reason why there's a big attack on the family and father figures in general, I believe, is because our Heavenly Father. That verse right there in Matthew 7 where it talks about, you know, a father taking care of his kid. Oh, you watch shows, you watch TV. A father's made fun of. He's just stupid. He's lazy. He doesn't do nothing. The Bible time and back whenever my grandpa was young, the father went out and provided for his family. Kids used to sit around. I mean, I was guilty of it when I was a kid. My dad could whoop your dad. Don't tell me you ain't never done that, Alan. You ain't never told no kid that. I know you have. I can see it look on your face. And I'm sure your daughter said that. Somebody, my dad whooped you. Dads were strong. They were protective. I mean... We got a heavenly Father. He's strong. He'll protect us. He'll take care of us. Are you going to have downs in your life? Yes. I still suffer from depression. I still have days where I'm down. I just have to lean on God harder. 
I have to pray harder. I have to study harder. Go out and witness to people. Boy, if you, when you're depressed, you want to talk about something that's really good is when you can lead somebody to the Lord. They'll get you excited. Don't give up if if you're doing God's will and things ain't working right. It takes time. That's a that's the problem with most people is, is we want to give up. It's it's too much. But that verse talks about if you're worrying, it ends that with O oh, ye of little faith. Every time the disciples worried, when they were in that storm, just O oh, ye of little faith. Every time somebody worried, it was mentioned they had little faith. And it, and it just fascinates me that how much faith it takes for salvation. I mean, if you're saved, raise your hand. Yeah. Y'all believe it, right? God's going to see you through this month and your finances. Who really believes that? Raise your hand. Oh, yeah. We've got some people hesitating. He'll take care of us. He died for you. He died for me. But that's the thing I want you to get out of is that if you're worrying, turn to God. Read your Bible more. Study more. Pray more. That's never a bad thing to do. But don't sit around and worry. It's not going to do nothing but damage your health. Now, see, six years ago, I was on medication for heart anxiety. I'm not on any medication for my heart. I've been off the anxiety and stress medicine for years. Does my heart still act up and stop? Yes. I've learned to live with it. You all hear me cough every now and then. or Like I'm going to die. That's just my heart stopping. It, It should start back. Only down part is, is we don't know when I'm going to have a heart attack because, yeah, it's a guessing game. But you know what? I was in the ER once. They thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought I was dying. I don't know what they thought. That nurse, she come in there, she looked at me, and she says, are you afraid of dying? That's, by the way, you got stuff hooked up to you. That's exactly what you want to hear. Are you afraid of dying? That's a doctor asking me this. I looked at her and said, no. I'm not afraid of dying. And I'm not. I said, because I know what's going to happen to me when I die. I know where I'm going to go. Am I going to miss my family? Yes. But I'm not afraid of dying. And she looked at me, she's like, you're really calm, so this is something wrong. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's going to make me calm. (laughs) Don't stress. Don't worry. God will take care of you. If you're having issues, keep seeking after God. I do recommend Faith Bible Starts the 17th. Sign up for that. Show up for the first class. It's a Monday night, 6 through uh, 9 o'clock. It's worth going to, and they're going to have a good one this year, this semester. They're going to have creation. Fall semester is going to be, I think, better because it's going to have a the exodus and pyramids and pharaohs and plagues and all that kind of good stuff. I hope this was a blessing. I hope this made some sense and it wasn't just a rambling on of an insane man. But I hope y'all got something out of it and I hope y'all do just, if you are doing everything for God and you still feel like your life's falling apart, keep on. Keep doing what's right. You're only looking at what page you're on. God's got a plan for your life. He will get you through. He will put you where he wants you. And you'll be so much happier if you just do his will instead of your own. Uh, Brother Miguel, will you uh, please uh, pray and dismiss us?